This lesson is for section 2.6 on implicit differentiation. Our objective for today is to find the derivative of an implicit equation. So let's begin by first explaining what an implicit equation is. Now all the work we've done to this point has always involved an explicit equation. So in common words, the implicit equations are not solved for you as y equals. So an explicit equation shown in this column here, these are all in terms of y. So y is equal to some function of x. Now here um, in an implicit equation, as you can see, these are equivalent to the equations to the left, but they are not solved for y. So these are called implicit equations when y is not solved for. So our goal today is to find derivatives of implicit equations. We're going to start with a really basic example, 2x minus y equals 4. Now if we want to differentiate this with respect to x, we're going to differentiate 2x like we normally would. Derivative of 2x is, is 2. Now the derivative of y is y prime and the derivative of 4 with respect to x is just 0. Now if I want to isolate y prime here, I would subtract 2, and then I would divide out that negative 1 to end up with y prime equals 2. Now we can verify that that's in fact the derivative if we look at the explicit form of this equation, and if we find the derivative here, we have y prime is equal to 2. So clearly it's much faster to find the derivative when a function is already written in, in its explicit form, but not every function can be written in explicit form. Sometimes um, you'll never be able to solve for y, or it'll be really difficult to isolate y. So that's why we need implicit differentiation. Now our next example is a little bit more interesting than our first example, and it also does a better job, I think, of highlighting the fact that implicit differentiation is simply an application of the chain rule. So when we want to find the derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 4 with respect to x, we're going to take x squared and differentiate that like we normally would. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. But now when we take the derivative of y squared, y is really a function of x. So we're thinking of this as a composite function here. So we're going to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of y squared is 2y multiplied by y prime. So here we're taking the derivative of y squared and then multiplying it by the derivative of the inside function y prime. So we have um, that equals the derivative of 4 which is 0 and now what we can do is solve for y prime. So if we want to isolate y prime here we have 2y multiplied by y prime equals negative 2x. Divide out that 2y on both sides so we have y prime is equal to negative 2x over 2y or simply negative x over y. So notice now your derivative is in terms of both x and y. All right, so in the previous two examples, we worked with um, two equations. They were written in both explicit and implicit form, and we differentiated them implicitly, even though we didn't really have to. Now, in some cases, we're going to have to use implicit differentiation because the function cannot be written in terms of y. It cannot be made into an explicit equation. Like, for example, this first one here, sine squared of 3x equals the cosine of y. We cannot turn this into y equals some function of x. So in this particular case, we would have to use implicit differentiation. So it's important to note that whenever you implicitly differentiate, all of your regular derivative rules will still apply. So the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, all of that still applies, just like normal. Um, but whenever you have to take the derivative of y, you have to make sure that you're using the chain rule as well. So let's try out our first example here. This is an equation right now in implicit form that cannot be rewritten in explicit form. So in order to find dy dx, so the derivative of y with respect to x, we'll have to use implicit differentiation. So if we want to take the derivative of this left-hand side here, what I think would be helpful to do is to rewrite this as the sine of 3x squared equals cosine of y first. And that way you can see that this is primarily a squared function. So when you take this derivative, you're just going to bring down that 2 and make this 2 times the sine of 3x to the first. Now this is a composite function, so we have to use the chain rule here and take the derivative of the inside. Now that inside function is a, is a composite function as well. So we're, we're going to have to multiply by the cosine of 3x, because that's the derivative of the sine of 3x, but then we'll have to multiply by the derivative of 3x, which is 3. Now the right hand side, when you differentiate the cosine of y here, well this is simply um, negative sine of y, and whenever you differentiate this function y, you're going to think of it as a composite function as well. You have to multiply that by the derivative of y. So you're using the chain rule here and calling that negative sine y times y prime. Now we always want to isolate y prime. Okay, so to isolate y prime here, I would have to get rid of this negative sine y by dividing it out throughout. So um, I'm just going to simplify the left hand side a little bit and call that 6 times the sine of 3x times the cosine of 3x, and then I'll divide this by negative sine of y to get y prime alone. So here is our derivative dy dx. 
All right, example two is another implicit equation that cannot be written in explicit form. So we have to use implicit differentiation to find the derivative of y with respect to x. So if we start with this left-hand side here, we need to find the derivative of 2y first. Now the derivative of 2y is 2, but then we have to use the chain rule and multiply by y prime. Then when we take the derivative of the tangent of x, that's going to give me um, secant squared x, so I subtract secant squared x. And on the right-hand side, I differentiate negative 2x cubed like I normally would, so I get negative 6x squared. And then when I take um, the derivative of the cosecant of y, I have negative cosecant y times cotangent of y multiplied by y prime. So you always have to make sure you're using the chain rule. So you find the derivative here like you normally would, then you multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is y prime. Now our goal is always to isolate y prime, and as you can see here, we have two different terms with y prime. So we're going to have to get those two terms together. So I'm going to move this term over to the left, and I'll move this term to the right. So I'm going to isolate the y prime terms. So I will take this and write that as 2y prime plus the cosecant of y times the cotangent of y times y prime equals, on the other side, secant squared of x minus 6x squared. Now, the whole point of moving these terms together so that I can factor the y prime out, so I have y prime multiplied by 2 plus the cosecant of y times the cotangent of y equals secant squared of x minus 6x squared. Now, I can just divide out this whole term here to isolate y prime. So I have y prime equals secant squared of x minus 6x squared over 2 plus the cosecant of y times the cotangent of y. So the algebra here is really important. You need to make sure that you're able to isolate y prime and factor appropriately. All right, in example three, we are asked to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of this implicit equation at the point negative one, one. Now, this is again another example of an equation that cannot be written in explicit form. So when we find the derivative here, we'll have to use implicit differentiation. Now, we've definitely seen this type of question before. Um, it's just never been in terms of an implicit equation. So we found equations of tangent lines plenty of times before. So we're going to use the same process that we normally would do. We need to find the derivative so that we can find the slope of that tangent line. So what we're going to do is work on finding the derivative of this implicit equation. Now, x squared, that's pretty easy to find the derivative. That's just 2x. But as soon as you get to x, y, you have to recognize that this is actually a product. So we'll have to take the derivative of the product by finding the first factor, you keep it the same, and multiplying it by the derivative of the second factor. The derivative of the second factor is y prime. Then we'll add to that the derivative of the first, which is 1, multiplied by the second. We do not have to multiply this by y prime. We are not differentiating y here. So you leave it as just 1 times y. Now, when we take the third term here, negative y cubed. Here we will have to differentiate y, so we have negative 3y squared. Using the chain rule, we'll multiply that by y prime. On the right-hand side, we have another product. So we take the first factor, x, and multiply it by the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the second is going to be 2y multiplied by y prime, again, using the chain rule here. Then we'll have to add to that um, the second term, so y squared, multiplied by the derivative of the first, which is simply 1. All right, remember, your goal is to find the derivative of y with respect to x. That's y prime, right? So I've highlighted each of these terms with y prime in them because we want to group those together on one side of the equation. So I'm going to um, leave the x y prime and this negative 3y squared times y prime on the left. And then I'm going to bring this y prime term here over to the left-hand side. So we'll rewrite that as uh, 2xy times y prime. Then on the right-hand side, I'm going to move that 2x and this 1y term to the right. So now I'm left with y squared minus 2x minus y. All right, now the whole point of trying to get those y primes together is so that we can factor them out. So we'll take each of these terms, factor it out. And we're left with x minus 3y squared minus 2xy equals y squared minus 2x minus y. Now we can divide out this whole factor here so we can isolate y prime. So we now have y prime is equal to y squared minus 2x minus y over x minus 3y squared minus 2xy. So it's really important that you're comfortable with all the algebra here. Now this is the derivative of y with respect to x. So we just found dy dx. Okay. All right, so to answer the original problem here, we want to find the equation of the tangent line, which means we need to find the slope of that tangent. We can find that by evaluating our derivative, right? So we want to plug in 
the point negative 1, 1. Typically, we only plug in an x value, but now we have our derivative in terms of x and y. So we're going to plug in negative 1, 1. So we have y prime is equal to 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 minus 1 all over negative 1 minus 3 times 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 times positive 1. So our derivative here at negative 1, 1 is 1 plus 2 minus 1 over negative 1 minus 3 plus 2. So what is this? 2 over negative 2. And we have a slope of negative 1. All right, therefore, the equation of our tangent line, let's write it over here. This is going to be y minus 1 equals negative 1 times x plus 1. So just using the coordinate negative 1, 1 and our slope, m equals negative 1, we end up with this particular equation. All right, our last example is going to highlight a technique that is useful in finding the derivative of your derivative. So here we have an implicit equation, and we're going to find dy dx. Then we're asked to find the derivative of the derivative here. All right, and it's pretty cool, I think, what, what happens here. All right, so let's find dy dx. So we're going to differentiate the left-hand side here. So we have 6x squared minus, when we differentiate here, we end up with 6y. We'll have to multiply that by y prime using the chain rule here. On the right hand side we end up with 0. So if I want to isolate y prime here, okay, I end up moving the 6x squared to the right and dividing by negative 6y, so I end up with uh, x squared over y. Alright, so here is y prime, or in other words dy dx. Okay, so if we want to find the derivative of the derivative, we're really looking for y double prime. That's another way of just rewriting uh, the notation that's used below. Okay, so let's find y double prime. So we'll start with this, y prime is equal to x squared over y. And we notice that to find y double prime, we have to differentiate the right-hand side here, which is a quotient. So we're going to use the quotient rule. So we'll take ho, which is y, times d high, 2x, minus high, times d ho. Now the derivative of the low here is going to be y prime. Okay. Then we'll divide that by ho ho, y squared. All right, now why I think this is cool is because you've already found y prime. We already know y prime is x squared over y, so we can make that substitution here. So we're going to say y double prime is equal to 2xy minus x squared times y prime, which is x squared over y, okay, all over y squared. Now we have to algebraically simplify this a little bit more, and whenever you multiply um, a, a fraction in, in terms of the numerator here, let's just multiply by the denominator over the denominator here. So we'll multiply by y over y so we can clear out that denominator. Now we have y double prime is equal to 2xy squared minus x to the fourth, because those y's here will cancel, all over y cubed. So we found y double prime, and if you look, that is exactly what they asked us to verify, that this was our, our derivative of our derivative. All right, before we move on to the very last part of the lesson, I just wanted to warn you guys that you're going to have a couple problems in your homework over the next couple of days that ask you to find the derivative of the derivative, except for they're going to be even trickier than the example I just worked with you. So um, in those particular examples, once you get to this part here, y double prime, you don't stop. You actually make another substitution. So you continue to substitute the original implicit equation back into y double prime, okay? So we're not doing it here because we don't have to, but in the um, problems from your homework, you're going to have to use this trick, okay? So I'm just going to give you this hint so that hopefully when you um, come to those problems, you'll recognize to, when to do that, okay? All right, so in our last problem here, we want to evaluate y double prime when x is 3 and y is 1. So if you're not familiar with this notation, I think we covered it in the very first lesson on derivatives. But basically, whenever you see that bar, you're just evaluating it with whatever is given. So we want to evaluate y double prime when x is 3 and y is 1. So we have 2 times 3 times 1 squared minus 3 to the fourth all over 1 to the third power. All right, so if we evaluate here, we have uh, 2 times 3, 6 minus 81 all over 1, so we get negative 75. All right, and that ends the lesson, okay? Please make sure you're comfortable with using implicit differentiation and applying the chain rule when you are finding the derivative of y, and then, of course, you have to be able to isolate y prime, okay? All right, um, nice job. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.